people will be coming in. Hi, I'm Leora Svanko, the Executive Director of Lane Arts Council. We work to cultivate strong and creative arts communities throughout Lane County. We do arts education in schools. We support artists through grants and workshops, and then we run this first Friday Art Walk. So thanks for being here. As you know, the Art Walk is, we do it rain or shine year round, so you can count on us every first Friday to give you a fantastic evening. Tonight we, is such a beautiful night. We got so lucky with the weather. And you're going to have a fantastic night touring through all the galleries and exploring the art. And then there's art all over the place in this town. So um, I know you're going to have a great time. If you don't have an art walk guide yet, Lewis is around. He can pass out art walk guides. So just raise your hand if you need one. It's a guide of all the galleries and venues that will be um, on the art walk. But you'll be going to five featured stops. And so thank you for hosting us at Oregon Art Supply. It's a beautiful place to start. I would love, the Art Walk is possible because of sponsors, of course, who make it happen. This month's sponsor is the Green Hill Humane Society. I want to thank them so much for sponsoring this Art Walk. And Lauren and Sasha are here with Sweetheart, is a little cutie pie, and she's going to tell you about an upcoming event that they're having. All right, thanks for having us out, guys. So. Um, our upcoming event is actually next Friday, November 11th. It's Art for Animals. It's a live and silent auction that benefits over 3,000 animals that we take care of each year. A lot of really great local artists in the auction. Um, it's at Ninkasi's Administrative Building, complimentary beer and wine, as well as food. So please come out and support the animals. Tickets are at green-hill.org. Um, and real quick, just so you guys know, Sweetheart is available for adoption. She is a senior dog, and this month we have a senior special, so she has no adoption fee. So tell your friends, she's a love, and we're hoping she'll find a home. You could walk off a sweetheart tonight. Right? What a surprise on the art walk. I think our first time we have a dog. Come back to carry. She's kind of out for the night. So um, it is with great pleasure that I introduce our art walk host, James Aday. Um, as you may know, Lane Arts Council is celebrating how many years? 40. Thanks, Dave. 40. 40 years of supporting the arts community. And guess who founded Lane Arts Council? Jane. Isn't that cool? You know, like the person that's, yeah, right? There were others. 
Co-accused presidents, Lena Roberts, and a team of people. But I think it's just, I'm so moved. You know, Lena's Council, we had our 40th anniversary celebration, and, and James was the MC, and it's been so fantastic as an executive director to get to know the founder of the organization where you work. You know, and we did an interview together, and he was talking about all the programs that they did, and workshops for artists, and then arts education, and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, but we do that. And we still do that, you know? Like, we, we, we've aligned to the mission for 40 years. Um, it's because we have this fantastic arts community that's still going to be here and always going to be here because the arts are central to our lives, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what Lane Arts Council, we're here to support the work that you do as artists and, the, and what you want as patrons of the arts. And so it's, it's just such an honor to have um, the founder here with us hosting. And you know he's going to give you lots of information about um, Lane Arts Council along the way. And he'll be interviewing the artists. Um, and I just, you know, I just want to acknowledge him because it really takes something you know, to run a nonprofit, which I get that. But I have never started a nonprofit. And for him and his crew to, to start this and have it be such a successful nonprofit over the years is such an incredible incredible contribution, James. So I really want to thank you. It's been so great getting to know you. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just love this guy. And he's continuing. He's an artist in his own right. And he paints and he works with class. He's a theater. He's on the board of the Very Little Theater. And he also worked for the city and cultural art, you know, the cultural services division. So um, real just um, contributor to not just Lane Arts Council, but the arts community in general. Okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> and um, I just want to let you know, this is a special host we have tonight. So please um, enjoy, enjoy the tour with James and help me give a warm welcome to James a day. Thank you all very much. I, I appreciate all that. I noticed that uh, in the 70s, I mean, I, I, I applaud everybody that's been in Leora and her staff's position because they have kept the, the mission going through some rough times, and that's great. When in the 70s, those of you who were around may remember that people who collected art would go to Portland to buy Eugene artists. <laughs> and that was one of the major things that the Arts Council and other groups tried to do is change that around. So when I walk here and I see red dots, on these works in here, I feel really good because that means people are recognizing they don't have to go out of town to respect their profits. Now with this show, since it's small works and there's six artists here working, this is my easy job for emceeing. I'm going to introduce Rebecca and she's going to introduce everybody else and they all have something to say. Thank you. <laughs> uh, welcome. So at this show, uh, we put together, um, it was sort of um, my idea to do something because of the uh, Jacobs Gallery closing, and I really felt like we were all going to miss that wonderful venue um, this time of year where there was just a, you know, a huge gallery full of small works. And so I um, asked some friends of mine to, to see if they would be interested in coming and doing um, some small works and so we decided let's just put a show together and I limited it to six inches by six inches with six folks and six pieces each so <laughs> that's why we call it the six six by six um, uh, the other challenge was just what's what happens when you shift scale most of these um, artists work much larger uh, and so that was sort of the challenge and we um, sort of took it upon ourselves to do that and, and find out, you know, what that meant and sort of have fun with it. Uh, and so I hope you all enjoy it. I'm going to pass the mic on because we've got a lot of folks here. And um, so they can each have uh, an opportunity to talk about their work. Jan. Okay, I'm Jan uh, Halverson and my pieces are the, the six over there. Um, all around a very good friend of mine and her daughter in this moment that happened when I was visiting her and I couldn't get it out of my head so it just ended up being my subject. Six by six was hard. <laughs> Not the size. I like working small and I work in media so I'm used to, to set frames for things but in painting I kind of like being able to do anything I want. It was hard. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, but in the end, um, you, you know, it's good to persevere and get something out that you're pretty happy with. So that's, that's <laughs> Hi. Um, my pieces are next to hers. They're on the wall with the little bird sculptures. And in terms of working small, 
I, I work small a lot of times, I work larger, but on these, the surface it, it is paper, and I work larger, and then I just cut that down, I found the composition I liked, and then I add in elements and detail, and I didn't, you know, and then the birds find their place, you know, when there's room. So it was um, maybe cheating, <laughs> but they ended up six by six, and I made sure the wings didn't go beyond, break the rules, so. And after we all talk, I'm more than happy, and I'm sure the others to answer questions if you have any. Hello, my name is Beth Robinson, and uh, these guys are mine. I'm a collage artist, mostly digital collage. I usually work four by six is my pretty, that's the one I really like to work in. Uh, Bev and I collaborate quite a bit, so she challenges me to make smaller images. And over the past year, I've been doing a collage a day kind of ideal, because most of my work is about grief and bereavement. So I try to get a moment during the day. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah Sedwick. Uh, it's nice to see you all. My work are the oil paintings that are over here on the end, these six. And what is so cool about this show that Rebecca put together is that I think all of us made these pieces specifically for this show. So I know that I painted all six of those in about two and a half weeks back in September, and I had a blast doing it. The interesting thing about working at this small scale for a realist artist is I sort of have to make a decision whether I'm going to paint small things life-size or big things, make them really tiny, or tiny things and blow them up. And that's kind of a decision that I have to make no matter what size I'm working in. Um, but for these six, I went with painting small things life-size. So I painted figs, they're very small, they're pretty much life-size on a six by six canvas. I painted some very tiny apples and some extremely tiny pears. I think they're called cycle <laughs> pears. They were about this big. And so it's kind of a scale trick. Um, yeah. Anyway, I had a lot of fun with these, and I think the show was really fantastic. Uh, real quick, I want to put in a plug. I have a solo show down the street at Out on a Limb Gallery, which is not an official Art Walk stop tonight, but it would be great if you all could swing through there on your way between stops. Uh, and that's it. Thanks a lot. Hello, I'm Zoe Cohen, and this is my work here. And um, I am an instructor also, very fortunate to be an instructor here at the store, and I teach mostly abstract painting. And um, I'm just, I'm enamored with mid-century artwork, and I'm very interested and curious why that phenomenon is still going. My theory is that the chaos of the world, uh, that the visuals of abstract art let people kind of breathe for a minute and kind of take something else in anyway. Um, but for this show, because I usually do work larger also, I um, challenged myself to do uh, work that I, that was similar to a new class that I'm teaching, right? so I haven't worked in that medium so often, which is kind of a, uh, a mashup of collage and abstract art. So I um, my class is called Visual Haiku, and on these I took kind of rice papers and different kind of papers and, and, and just made really quick marks and uh, paint and then I, I took them like puzzle pieces and put them together on the small canvases. So this is made up of different like puzzle pieces of different kind of thin paper with paint and uh, crayon and everything on it. But that, I, I, had, I also had a super fun time doing it and I really enjoyed going out of the box and doing a series. It was really easy to do a series of six and to, to stick with the size. So I love, sometimes having a limitation is a really great thing because if an artist, especially an abstract artist, you can just do almost anything. So it's great to have a limit and give yourself that challenge. And my last plug is for Green Hill. I am really excited when I found out that you guys were uh, sponsoring this tonight. Thank you. I have an 11-year-old dog named Bella who is the you know, joy of the world to me. And she's a, a Whippet mix from Green Hill. And she's been the best. Thanks. Thank you. That's right. We haven't heard anything about your work. <laughs> uh, out of it. Which one? Uh, oh, I think I see. Very quickly, because I don't want to take too much time. But um, I have worked this small before, but I but I've been working larger, and so it was still a challenge. You know, it was like oh, and a lot of the smaller pieces were more collage, and this was more about painting. So sometimes the scale of your tool will really determine the scale of which you're working and so that was a challenge for me because I've really shifted from 
collage pieces to more painting pieces, painterly pieces. And so working with a brush all of a sudden was a lot different than working with a, you know, a, a drawing tool. So there is some drawing in there, but there is a, an awful lot of painting. Um, and this was just a series. I'm, I'm working on some larger pieces. A number of us are going to have a show at Maud Kearns in the spring. So um, a lot of the work that you see here is really based on that series that I'm doing for that show. Um, and it has to do with bees and, and nature and really personal history. So uh, I hope you all enjoy it. So thank you. Does anybody have any questions that we'd like to ask of the artists this time? This should be an interactive hello <laughs> behavior. No? Well, I will say one thing about the size. I'm, I'm intrigued about the size because a long time ago someone told me whether you're working on stage with a script or you're working on a canvas, you start off with limitations. And it's being able to work inside that restriction that frees us up in a lot of ways. Uh, there's sometimes, I did a lot of improvisational theater in the 70s, and that unfortunately had no limitations and it was sometimes very challenging but the group ended up putting limitations on ourselves so when i saw these projects i got very excited about it but i don't want to take up all your time so that you don't have time to look at these works i'm always remembered in the 70s i heard a story about a guy that ran up to the louvre, louvre and said quick i'm double parked where's the mona lisa <laughs> so let's take uh, 10 minutes or so to look around and enjoy these works and then we'll move on down to the next stop, okay? Thank you.